Tolkien's universe is often remembered in the glow of high adventure and noble quests, a world of bright colors and heroic deeds. But behind this veil of light lies something far more sinister. A shadow stretches across Middle-earth, where darkness festers and evil whispers from the void, plaguing the hearts of men and more into submission. This is, in fact, a world where living, breathing terror walks among the creatures, cursing their souls, forever bound to the will of the Dark Lord of the Rings himself, Sauron, whose malice knows no bounds. Stay with us as we descend into the abyss and uncover the seven most terrifying servants of Sauron. But be warned, these are the nightmares that will stalk you long after their story has been told. Number 7. The Trolls of Mordor With thick, leathery skin, powerful arms and legs, the savagery of a wild beast and the viciousness of a hateful hunter. The trolls are believed to have been created by Melkor in mockery of the Ents, just as the orcs were made as dark characters to the elves. Although they mostly tend to be creatures of the night, as exposure to sunlight will turn them into stone, forever entrapped in a grotesque sculpture that would kill them, Sauron was able to conceive the Olaghai, which lacked their fatal flaw of weakness to sunlight and were shown to be much more intelligent. The Oleg High represented the pinnacle of Sauron's dark craftsmanship, combining the creature's traditional brute strength with an alarming intelligence that set them apart from their predecessors. These monsters were bred in the later days of the Third Age with the sole objective of being unleashed upon the world during the War of the Ring. Unlike their precursors, who were little more than irrational beasts and easily tricked, these new creatures were disciplined and perfectly capable of following their master's orders, making them far, far scarier in battle. Despite their power and intelligence, the Oleghai were not without their limitations. They were entirely subject to Sauron's will. Without his guidance, they would likely revert to their more primitive instincts, becoming little more than savage beasts as their ancestors were before them. This made them vulnerable in the event of Sauron's downfall, as they lacked the independent thought and leadership to properly outlast without his presence. After the destruction of the One Ring and Sauron's defeat, it's most likely that the Olakai were either hunted down and destroyed or faded into obscurity, their purpose lost with their lord's end. Number 6. The Black Numenorians An ancient people who rose to prominence during the Second Age, they were a dark reflection of their once noble ancestors. Descendants of the proud Numenorians, these men were seduced by the promise of power and their eternal fear of mortality. Such dread would consume them, driving this once great civilization to forsake the wisdom and grace of their ancestors in exchange for a forbidden knowledge that would corrupt them until the end of days. As Numenor began to fall into darkness, they emerged, their hearts encased by greed, lust for power, and a fear of death. Turning away from the Valar and the light of Eru, they sought instead the twisted gifts that Saron offered, pledging their loyalty and service in exchange for the promise of extended life and dominion. The King's Party, as they were known, became some of Sauron's most loyal and feared servants, wielding dark sorcery and commanding vast armies in his command. They were skilled in the arts of war, ruling from their fortresses in Middle-earth, particularly in the regions of Umbar and Harad, which had become strongholds of fear and oppression, both old tools greatly employed by their one true leader, Sauron. Number 5. The Mouth of Sauron Mounted on an aberration of a steed with his dark cloak against the wind and fiery eyes that gazed into your soul from within his dark helm, this was no headless horseman. This is the Mouth of Sauron, and he's no fiend, dark creature, Nazgul, or even undead. But as a true loyal servant of the Dark Lord, he was not but a living man, a renegade, from the Black Numenorians who went on to learn wicked pieces of wisdom 
that led him straight into the arms of Sauron. Very little is known about his past life. As a faithful servant, his life is now dedicated to his master, and whatever came before that is of no importance to him or the ones that he serves. He is, perhaps, one of the most enigmatic figures in the lore of Middle-earth. His very title suggests that he has surrendered his identity and character, becoming nothing more than a mouthpiece for his master's words. What is known is that he rose to a position of great power within the hierarchy, being comparable to the Nazgul, becoming the Dark Lord's chief emissary and spokesman, one of the few trusted to communicate his master's will to others. He was the emissary to the Black Gate, where he confronted the leaders of the Free Peoples close to the end of the War of the Ring, presenting false terms of surrender in order to ensure his master's victory, his arrogance and confidence ever palpable. We can see here that he stands beyond mere support, but in truth, he's a twisted, corrupted man who had given himself entirely to the service of evil and was willing to give it his all in order to ensure their triumph in honor of his master. What we can most take from this one is that even being a mere mortal, he was capable of truly despicable things. And this is where true evil lurks. He hadn't been forced to do anything. He hadn't been seduced. He was simply twisted and relished serving the Dark Lord. Number 4. Shelob Unable to run, walk, or even crawl away as her poison flows through your veins, Shelob was the spawn of Ungoliant, the first spider, an eight-legged, dark beast that would study its prey from the shadows with its thousand eyes before entrapping them in her webbing and poisoning them with her fangs so that her meal would not be capable of escaping. Many are the different creatures that eat animal and even human flesh in this world, but Shelob is a different kind of monster. As the child of an elder creature, the gigantic arachnid is, in fact, shown to amuse herself by hunting and preying on meat she could find. She even feasted on orcs, not being one to differentiate them from humans. Her lair, a labyrinthine network of tunnels deep within the mountains of Mordor, was a place of inconceivable horror. The stench of death permeated the air, and the walls were decorated with what little remained of her countless victims, mummified in webs and left to rot. Even the most seasoned of Sauron's minions dreaded entering her home, as within that darkness, Shelob reigned supreme, a creature of pure malevolence and ancient, insatiable hunger. Different from other members on this list, she's not bound by any oath fear or loyalty to Sauron. In reality, their alliance is merely a convenience for both parties, as Sauron views the spider as a useful tool to guard the pass of Sirenth Ungol, but holding no sway over her, as a creature of such antique evil can never truly fully be governed. Number 3. The Nazgul Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for mortal men doomed to die. Cloaked figures riding in the night, sword in hand and provoking dread, fear, and death wherever their lifeless eyes would stare. The Nazgul, a black speech translation for ring wraiths, are perhaps the first thing one would think about when asked about Sauron's servants. When the original nine human kings had received their rings of power, the one ring steadily clouded and corrupted their minds and souls and would inevitably bind their eternal service to the Dark Lord. The transformation of these once mighty kings into the twisted beings they became was a gradual and horrifying descent into darkness and madness. At first, the rings granted them great power and longevity something any sane man would desire above all else. The gift was, however, a double-edged sword, for as time went on, their physical forms faded, becoming less substantial until they were little more than wraiths, invisible to all but those who could see into the spirit world. Their power grew substantially, but so too did their enslavement to Sauron, who held authority over them through the One Ring. 
As their physical bodies withered away, so too did their humanity. Shadows of their former selves, driven by an insatiable hunger for power and a deep gnawing fear of death, ultimately making them utterly loyal to their master, for they knew that only he could sustain their wretched existence. Their very presence could sap the courage of their prey, leaving their enemies paralyzed with terror, much like Shelob's own poison. Only they poison the soul. The Nazgul would use their haunting cries and spectral forms to unsettle and demoralize their enemies. In battle, the fiends would wield morgul blades that inflicted wounds beyond the physical world, causing those struck to fall into a deadly malaise, teetering on the brink of becoming wraiths themselves, forever entrapped between the world of the living and the dead. Number 2. Kamul the Easterling You can run, but you can never hide. Formerly the mighty king of Rune, he is also known as the Shadow of the East and was a figure of great power even before falling under the thrall of Sauron. His transition from a revered ruler to the second-in-command of the Nazgul easily marked him as one of the most terrifying entities to walk the lands of Middle-earth. Though the sunlight weakened him more than any of his fellow ring wraiths, this vulnerability did little to diminish the terror that he inspired, as his unparalleled ability to sense the presence of the One Ring proved to be his most prized weapon. He was a relentless hunter, drawn to it with a borderline animalistic obsession like a lion stalking its prey. The Shadow of the East proved to be an inescapable predator whose pursuit would never be stopped. Wherever the ring went, he was sure to follow, bringing with him the shadow of death and despair, and of course, his obsession. And now for our number one, the Witch King of Angmar. There could be no other choice for the number one most terrifying servant of Sauron other than the Witch King of Angmar, chief commander of the Nazgul, and the physical embodiment of the Dark Lord's dominion over men. His story is one of darkness, power, and of a mad descent into a dreadful existence that would plague Middle-earth for millennia. Long before he became the Witch King, he was a man of great power and ambition. Not necessarily an evil man, but a ruler who desired more than what the mortal world would offer. His ancient name now lost a time as a testament to the corrupting influence of the One Ring. Like the other eight ring wraiths, he'd been seduced by the promise of immortality and power, but his fall undoubtedly was the most profound. The ring granted to him, granted him great power, but the cost was high. He had abandoned his humanity, now a vessel of his Dark Lord's power. He grew to be his right hand his sword against his enemies, his most prized dark knight and loyalist of servants. The Witch King was responsible for the destruction of the Kingdom of Arnor, one of the greatest realms of men. Through years of war and subterfuge, the Dark Sorcerer systematically dismantled Arnor, leaving its lands desolate and its people scattered. His hatred for the heirs of Isildur, the line that had once defeated his master, was unrelenting. He pursued them with a vengeance that bordered on obsessive homicide, determined to eradicate their bloodline from all of Middle-earth. His cruelty didn't stop there. The Witch King was known for his torturous methods, extracting information and breaking the wills of his captives before delivering them to a slow, agonizing death. His fortress at Karn Doom was a place of unspeakable horrors, where the screams of the damned would echo through its halls. Those who were brought before him rarely lived to tell the tale, and none would leave his presence unchanged, forever scarred at the mere sight of such a wicked force. In the War of the Ring, the Witch King was of great importance to Sauron's campaign. He was the one to lead the Nazgul in their hunt for the One Ring, relentlessly pursuing Frodo Baggins and the Fellowship of the Ring across Middle-earth. He was also the one who wounded Frodo on Weathertop, a wound that nearly claimed the Hobbit's life and left a mark that would never fully heal, a token of his memory for the bearer of the Ring 
to never forget. The Witch King's role in the War of the Ring extended far beyond mere pursuit. He was Sauron's most trusted enforcer, the embodiment of his master's will on the battlefield. His mere presence was enough to strike terror into the hearts of even the bravest warriors. Wherever the Witch King rode, death and despair followed suit. His voice, cold and cruel, could shatter the resolve of armies, turning victory into rout with but a word. His touch, death. His gaze, madness. At the Battle of Pelennor Fields, the undead king led Sauron's forces with ruthless efficiency. Mounted on his abomination of a beast, he descended upon the city of Minas Tirith like the Avatar of Death, breaking the gates with a single strike of his mace. No man could stand before him. His very approach sent soldiers fleeing in terror, proclaiming that no living man may hinder me. No sane person would dare challenge him. Although seemingly invincible, his arrogance would eventually lead to his downfall at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, where he met his end at the hands of Eowyn and Mary, proving after all that even the greatest, darkest, most vile servants of Sauron could fall. None of these fiendish servants would ever be forgotten. Their names would be etched into the memories of the people of Middle-earth, whispered in fear around campfires and recounted in tales of horror for generations and more generations to come. They were more than mere followers. They were the very embodiment of their lord's malevolence, emissaries of death incarnate, who brought ruin and despair wherever they tread. Their shadows would linger long after their passing, an everlasting reminder of the darkness than what's threatened to engulf the world. These figures were not just legends after all, they were a terrifying reality, haunting their waking dreams and shaping the very fabric of their history. So what's your take on this list? Who would you add up there if you had a chance? Make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.